The Fibber, McGee, and Molly Show. NBC and Tums present Fibber, McGee, and Molly transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Ralph Goodman and directed by Max Hutto. Fibber and Molly will be with you in a minute. This is Don Wilson. When you have a nagging case of acid indigestion or heartburn, don't wait for relief. Take Tums, the don't wait relief. You don't waste any time with water, spoons, and glasses. There's no mixing. Just eat one or two pleasant, minty-tasting Tums, and relief is on the way. Tums are a safe relief, too. They are not water-soluble, therefore there's no danger of over-alkalizing. No acid rebound. The gentle form of calcium in Tums acts as a scientific buffer, neutralizes excess acid, then stops its action automatically. With all these advantages, Tums are economical besides. Cost only 10 cents a roll. So economical that you can always have them on hand at home and in your purse. So get a roll of Tums today. Yes, don't wait. Get Tums And you'll never have to wait for fast, pleasant relief from acid indigestion. You know, there's been a very active burglar at work in Wistful Vista the past few days. He robbed the home of Dr. George Gamble, among others, a few nights ago. And last night he visited Mr. and Mrs. McGee. Mr. McGee has gone for the police to show them the scene of the crime. And Mrs. McGee is on the phone as we join the robbery victims. Yes, Mabel, McGee's good wristwatch that I gave him in our portable record player. Right. Well, you see, McGee had a lot of strings hooked to the switch on the record player. So when the burglar bumped the strings, the player would go on and wake us. No! The burglar stole the whole business. Yes, it worked before. Yeah. McGee bumped into the thing twice during the night, and that record played so long. Oh, I gotta go now, Mabel. Here comes McGee. Goodbye. Hi, Molly. I'm home. I brought a detective with me. He, he's a sergeant, kiddo. That's higher than a corporal. Right, Sarge? Uh, uh, yes, I'm Sergeant Peterson, Mrs. McGee, Alroy Peterson, robbery detail. Oh, how do you do? I'm sure, Sergeant. Uh, now, I can tell you exactly how it happened. I already told him, Molly. He wants to look over the scene. This won't take long, Mrs. McGee. Mrs. McGee? <laughs> I thought you detectives always said ma'am. Well, well, not all of us, ma'am. Now, would you mind telling me about what time the robbery occurred, Mrs. McGee? Well, now, let me see. It must have been around 3.30 because we were asleep. Oh, no, Molly. It was closer to 4.30. Well, the reason I'm so sure of the time, Sergeant, is because we didn't get to sleep till about 3 with the phone ringing and the burglar alarm going off. That burglar alarm... Uh, just a moment, sir. You say your burglar alarm sounded... Sounded horrible, yes. That 30 piece orchestra playing the William Tell Overture at the top of their voice, and himself here tangled up in the strings and the telephone ringing. Hold it, Molly, hold it. I think you're going too fast for him. Did you get all that wrote down, Sergeant? Uh, Well, I won't take it all down, sir. I only brought one notebook. Well, we got plenty of paper if you run short. Oh, thank you. Now, would you mind uh, just giving me that bit about the burglar alarm again, please? Uh, Where is the alarm, sir? Oh, they stole that, too. Yeah, it had one of my favorite records on it and my wristwatch that I was using for bait. And when I tried it out, it worked fine because the guy next door called up to beef, but he's a sore head anyhow. Hector Howell. You know him, Hector Howell? Uh, well, let's try another angle, huh? <laughs> Have you any idea how the prowler gained access to the premises? How's that? Wants to know how he got in. Oh. I can tell you how he got out, sir, because the front door was standing wide open. Please, Molly, I'll tell him. I think he must have jimmied the window in the kitchen, Sarge, and then locked it again because it was locked tight this morning. Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, you mind if I take a look at the window? No, no, I guess you can. Although, come to think of it, the burglar probably come in the front door at that because that's where I had the watch here in the front room on the coffee table. Uh, which coffee table? The one the burglar stole. The burglar, the cop, uh, how was that again? You see, Sergeant, I put my watch on the coffee table for bait. To get the burglar to set off my burglar trap, see? It's a very fine watch. It's an heirloom my wife gave me several years ago. 
Only I've been meaning to have it fixed on account of because it's been running ten minutes slow and making me late for all my appointments. Sometimes he misses the first half of the bowling match because the watch... Keeps running ten minutes slow. It's a very handsome gold... Wristwatch. She give me it. I could set it up ten minutes every day. Only what it does, you see, it runs slow for three days and then it jumps ahead an hour. So I have to figure 30 minutes slow for three days and then an hour fast, which gets pretty confusing. Where'd he go? Down the street. I guess he wrote down everything he needed. Hmm. Well, it should be a breeze for them guys to solve this thing. All they gotta do is find a sneaky-looking guy wearing Kramer's diamond-studded elk's tooth and my gold wristwatch and eating off a Doc Gamble's sterling silver. If he's wearing your wristwatch, he'll be ten minutes late, too. That ought to help. It's probably the sergeant with some more questions. Come in. Well, Mr. Wimple. Hello, folks. Hi, Wimple. Come on in. Thank you, Mr. McGee. I'll only be a minute. I was on my way down to the police station. And Not I... you, too. I beg your pardon, Mrs. McGee. She means has that dangerous criminal who's on the loose broken into your house, too, Wimp? Oh, no, Mr. McGee. Not with Sweetie Face, my big old wife there. No burglar is that big a fool. Yeah, I guess you're right. How is it, Mrs. Wimple? All right? Oh, she's fine, Mrs. McGee. I'm just on my way over to the police station now to pick her up. Oh? She goes down there twice a week for the jujitsu course. Studying, is she? Teaching. Oh. She taught judo in the Marines during the war, you know. Ah, she sounds like a great girl, Wimp. Yes. A great big girl, Mr. <laughs> McGee. <laughs> Say, how much does she weigh, Wimp? Your wife, how much? Oh, I've never been able to find out, Mr. McGee. Oh, she won't tell, huh? Oh, no, it's not that, Mrs. McGee. It's just that every time Sweetie Face steps on a scale, the little arrow spins around about eight times, and then, like the poet says, the arrow shoots into the air and falls to the earth, be know not where. Longfellow? No, wide girl. <laughs> so long, folks. So long, Wallace. <laughs> There's more fun with the McGee's shortly. If you're self-employed or a professional person, listen while we look ten years ahead. Suddenly you need to enlarge your store or make improvements on your farm or replace some outdated equipment. Where's the money going to come from? It'll be easy if you're saving regularly through United States savings bonds because in less than ten years, those bonds will mature. You'll get back $4 $4 for every $3 you invest. Buying savings bonds is easier, more systematic than ever for self-employed and professional people. Your own bank has made it possible through the bond a month plan. You simply fill out a card authorizing your bank to buy a bond a month in your name. Funds will be transferred from your checking account once a month. And once a month, you'll receive a savings bond automatically. Bear in mind... Planned saving is effective saving. Invest in United States savings bonds through the Bond a Month plan. Any calls from the police department yet, Molly? Not yet, dearie. It'll take time, I suppose. Time? My gosh, that burglar's been burgling since day before yesterday, and they haven't caught him yet. But you just make a left turn without putting your hand out and zingle. Thirty seconds later, you're trying to phone a lawyer. Well, now, don't criticize the police, dearie. I think most of the time they do a fine job. You said it. Fine for this and fine for that. In 30 days, if you talk back to the judge. I'd like to be on that bench just once when a judge got a ticket for speeding. What would you do? I'd say, Judge, the officer here says you were going 60 miles an hour in a 30-mile zone. What's your excuse? Then he'd say the officer was lying. Like you did that time you were speeding. That's right. And I'd say, do you expect me to take your word against the word of this officer of the law? Like he did that time you were speeding? That's right. And he'd say, no, Your Honor. I'd expect you guys to stick together. Like you did that time you were speeding? That's right. And then you'd find the judge $50 for contempt of court like he did. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No. I'd find him 100 bucks because he's a judge and he should know better. <laughs> he's got a nerve coming into my court and trying to tell me what... Come in. Well, Dr. Gamble, come in. Hi, Molly. And hello to you, talk Hi, tall, dark, and then some. 
Always room for three more. Squeeze right in, boy. <laughs> Hush, McGee. Uh, doctor, have you heard anything new about the prowler in the neighborhood? No, Molly. They still haven't caught the culprit. I'm afraid I'll never get my set of silver back. It had the family crest engraved on it, too. Must be beautiful. Haven't you seen Fatso's family crest, Molly? Oh, it's lovely. Two meatballs over cross pork chops rampant on a field of spaghetti. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you two? That was supposed to be funny, don't you? You forgot get... to tell us, Uncle Milty. <laughs> oh. Well, anyway, I was just trying to cheer you up a little, Doc. After all, what... 79 Wistful Vista, Molly McGee speaking. Who? Oh, yes, he's here. It's for you, Doctor. Well, thank you, Molly. Hello. This is Dr. Gamble speaking. What? You did? Well, that's wonderful. I'll be right there. What's that address? Office calls. Me. McGee, you got a piece of paper? Yeah, right here, Doctor. Here's a pencil. What happened, Doctor? They found the burglar's room, and it's packed with loot. Oh? oh. Yep. I haven't got their hands on him yet. They've got my silver back. They want me to identify him. Gee, swell. He says they got the record player down there, but no sign of your wristwatch. And what was that address again, Chief? 1286. I'll be right down. Goodbye. Oh, dear. Well, now, if that ain't the most incompetent, acidine, knuckle-headed bunch of nincompoops I ever saw. Spend three days on a case and get back everything but my good wristwatch. Tough. My sentimental good gold watch that Molly gave me, that all was wrong with it, it loses ten minutes a day and then gains an hour, and I can tell what time it is just dandy. Well, it is a shame, dearie. Maybe they'll Why, find... George, I got a notion to go down there with you, Doc, and read them flatheads the riot act. They got a nerve recovering everything but my watch, and then... 79 was for this to Molly McGee speaking. Oh, yes. You again, Doctor, the chief oh. of police. Probably wants to tell you the crook slipped back in and stole his badge and his police car. Quiet! Car was... Yeah, Chief. Dead red. Oh, great. Fine. Yeah, I'll be right down. Get your hat, sonny boy, and come along. They just nabbed the burglar. Yeah? Good for them. Where'd they find him, Doctor? At the railroad station. Chief said he had his getaway planned on split-second timing to grab the eastbound streamliner. No kidding. But he was wearing a gold wristwatch that lost ten minutes on him. And the cops got him just as he missed his train. Aha! That's my wristwatch, Molly. Imagine my little watch helping to nab a crook. Yeah. Well, grab your hat and come along, Tootsie. We ought to get a reward for this on account of because that watch... Of... We'll say goodnight to Fibber and Molly in a moment. There's no end to the marvelous radio entertainment sent your way seven days a week, every day of the year on the NBC radio network. Tomorrow night, for example, you'll once again be entertained by that master marksman, Groucho Marx, as he once again badges his contestants on radio's funniest comedy quiz, You Bet Your Life. Groucho proves that people are more fun than anybody as he wisecracks his way right up to the top of the laugh parade on his weekly quiz festivities. Also on Wednesday evenings, you'll enjoy the entertainment provided by the great Gildersleeve as he bumbles his way through another misadventure as the colorful water commissioner of Summerfield. Listen to Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve every Wednesday evening over most NBC stations. And listen, too, for the top news stories dramatized on The Big Story. The Big Story brings you authentic news happenings direct from the front pages of America's newspapers in a stellar mystery series. Yes, every Wednesday evening on the NBC radio network, you'll be enjoyably entertained by You Bet Your Life, The Big Story, and The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> turned on all right, McGee. Is your watch okay? Yep. Say, what were you and the chief of police in the big huddle about down there? Oh, I gave him a few suggestions for how to run his department. He seemed impressed. Really? Mm-hmm. Said that when the proper moment arose, he would arrange for a consultation with me. He said that? Mm hmm To you? Mm hmm Well, that was the gist of it, yes. I believe his exact words were, McGee, when I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Well, good night. <laughs> good night, all. In 
NBC and Tums have brought you the Fibber McGee and Molly program transcribed. Bill Thompson as Wallace Wimple, Arthur Q. Bryan as Dr. Gamble, and Bill Conrad as the detectives. This is John Wald. In-